Good morning, viewers, and welcome to another Onside SA Soccer Show. Joining me, as has been the case with all our AFCON games and weekends, is Manning Rangers League winner Gavin Radford. Gav? Morning, Butch. Good Thank to be here. Well, I don't know if it's a good morning. You know, disappointed after last night? How yeah, are you feeling? Yeah, a little bit apprehensive going into the game, and then I thought we didn't deserve to win at the end of the day. Yeah. We, don't, we don't seem to put the final touches to our game. We're there and thereabouts, we're hoping for them something to happen, then it doesn't work for us. And then we concede late again. Two games in a row we've conceded late, and it's hurt us. Yeah. You know, for me, our big players never played well. You know, against Egypt, where we all thought we were going to get beat, and the guys played great. I just thought attacking was, centre forward never held it up, but two wide players, Percy Tan and Lorch, kept having the ball taken away from them. And our midfield was really non-existent until, we, until Nigeria scored. But I agree. At the end of the day, uh... no, we just seem to we seem to lack the, the the passage of play between midfield and strike force. Yeah. So we don't give our defenders enough chance to move forward, so they can get out, so that the midfielders can push forward, then the strikers can push forward. Then we can keep the ball at the back, yeah. have a few touches. We go straight from the back midfield straight to the front so quick that the guys haven't got a chance to get out. And then before you know it, the defenders are already setting themselves to defend because the ball's coming back. Yeah. And I think that's something they need to learn, just to keep the ball for a couple of seconds, keep the play, and then slow it down, then move forward with the ball. Yeah, we just seem to lack a little bit of creativity. When I had a look at the stats after the game, we had one shot on target. Yeah, I think if we go into the stats and we dig deep into it, you'll see where the problems lie. I mean, if you look at the four or five games that we did play, the shots and goal were maybe about 10 or 12 on target, maybe two or three. Yeah. And that's where it lacks and shows you where we, we're lacking in our game. We just don't get enough chances yeah. to hit the target um, at the right time. And then we concede you're always going to have a chance in a game where you're going to be under pressure. And we just seem to fall flat when that pressure moment comes. Yeah, I just... Sadly, not mm. good enough. But overall, competition, would you be happy with getting in the quarterfinal or was one? Yeah, I think we would be happy to get in the quarterfinals. You know, we beat the host Egypt who everybody was tipping to win the tournament in front yeah. of their own crowd. So we silenced that. Yeah. That was a fantastic result. Guys should have been buoyed by that and, and really gone out. But again, it's, we're waiting for things to happen instead of yeah. making them happen. You know, we had a discussion earlier about taking the bite of the cherry and have the big bite. Yeah. Don't wait for something, then you get a little nibble at the end. You've got to go for it. The moment that whistle blows, you've got to go and put 90 minutes on the park. Yeah. And we're just playing in, in a more of a defensive type mode because I know that the other teams are just better than us, but we're just naive to trying to go forward and have a go. Yeah. So I would like to see us having more of a go and have a really put it out there yeah. instead well, of waiting. You know, being with Clive Barker on Sunday, having our tea and biscuits as usual Sunday morning, <coughs> and Clive just said, have a go. If you're going to get beat, don't die wondering. Let's give it our best shot. Don't sit back. The South African way is to have a go. And if you do get beat by the better team, you hold your hands up. I know Nigeria have better players, but I must say I was really disappointed. Yeah, I look that, at the Nigerian uh, team, like you say, they've got good players, but it doesn't look like they've played together for a long time. There's still a bit of individuals in the game. Yeah. So it gives us an opportunity to have a go. Uh, yeah. Most of our players play locally, so they all know each other's game. It's just a case of believing each other to have a full 90-minute game in them. Yeah. And that's where we, I think we fall short. We don't have that 90-minute game. Yeah, disappointing. We'll go through the balance of the AFCON later. later. But uh, I've got Stevie Brahm in our UK office. Steve, are you there? Morning, Steve. Are you there? Steve? Morning. How are you going? Morning. Uh, uh, please don't uh, bring up uh, the Bafana Bafana. You know, Gavin and I are both in mourning. So, uh, no, well, as I said, you know, I thought... You know, I think having beaten Egypt, I think exceeded expectations. So yeah. uh, you know, they, they didn't disgrace themselves. Now that's true. You know, we were just disappointed, and after having beaten Egypt, we went back into our group form. But uh, in fairness, you know, we didn't deserve to win. And upsetting Egypt, at least we got a feather in our cap, even though it's uh, not a major feather for me. Steve, on to no. the uh, topics that uh, speak about uh, your Harvey Elliott. Is that true? He's signing for Liverpool. Well, it looks like it, it hasn't quite happened yet, but it looks okay. like it is going to go through. I mean, he's obviously, uh, from the bits I've seen and the bits you read about, he's obviously a precocious talent. Um, Liverpool made it very clear early on that they wanted him. Okay. You know, it, you know, and they were up against, I mean, all the big European teams, uh, Real Madrid, PSG, you know, they're all coming in for him. So there was no way, I think, with that sort of interest, he was going to extend it and sign a schoolboy, 
extension to his contract at Fulham. He can't sign a professional contract until he's 17, so okay. he can still only sign schoolboy forms. But the, 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 the word that's come out to Liverpool is they're going to put him straight into the first-team squad. Okay. So they obviously see uh, huge talent there. And, you know, good luck to him. You know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's obviously a gamble. I mean, he's still young and he's growing. And, you know, but uh, Liverpool seem to, to like to push young players through, and I think yeah. that's to their credit. So um, I, he's a sort of an attacking uh, midfield. So the sort of player you can see would replace probably this year even somebody like uh, Zerdan Shakiri. I mean, yeah. he's, he's, he's not very big, but he's got a good left foot and he's got a few tricks. So, you know, I think he's definitely a name for the future. Okay, and he's English too, so that's one of your homegrown players. Yeah, no, players. exactly. That, that, that's the hell. And ultimately, they're going to have to pay some compensation, but it's going to be, you know, next yeah, to nothing compared to what they would have to pay to bring somebody in, you know, with that talent in a year or two's time. Okay, and that's good for your boys. Steve Newcastle United, every time I read an article, it's controversy. I see Steve Bruce has been mentioned with a job. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, I, I just, you just sort of wonder. I mean, I, I read something uh, earlier this morning that you know they were even considering, you know, asking for the big Sam to come back, and you just think that's sort of a step backwards. Sure. Steve Bruce, I don't think the Newcastle fans are going to get overly excited by that. Yeah. I mean, you know, he, he, you know, his, he doesn't play. Uh, his teams don't sort of play a particularly expansive game. Yeah. And I think uh, you know, if he does go, I guess it's a safe pair of hands, but. Uh, you know, all we seem to hear that coming out of Newcastle is they're looking to be selling players. They're not. They don't seem to be linked to bringing anybody in at the moment. So I think there's quite a lot of uh, disquiet amongst the fans up there, certainly. Yeah. Talking about disquiet, the Harry Maguire saga. Now, obviously, reading that uh, Leicester have signed two players. What does that uh, make it a yeah, certainty? I mean, they, they seem to be, and, and obviously they brought in Tielemans that they had on loan, and I know yeah. there are other clubs are looking at him. So I think it's a good buy. Um, brought in, you know, Perez, which we thought, which happened very quickly, quite yeah. surprised about. But uh, and they're also linked with uh, Tarkowski of Burnley. Now I think, you know, for, for Harry Maguire to leave, you'd think that 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 if, Tar if they can sign Tarkowski or know they can get him, then I think Maguire will go. And at this moment in time, it looks like United are in the frame for him. Yeah. Before, can you believe it, Steve? Twenty-four days today, the Charity Shield starts. Don't you think? Yeah. You know, it just it, doesn't. It, make it, 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 you know, and, and really, there haven't been that many sort of transfers yet. Yeah. So, especially with the window closing early, you know, it's good, you'd expect there to be quite a lot of activity. But as we said before, you you, you often get this domino effect. Yeah. So you need you need some big ones. So you know, the whole Paul Pogba saga, for example. If Paul Pogba does go, then that you know you can see others following on. But if he doesn't, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, one or two other potential moves might not happen. So. Um, it needs it, things need to start happening soon. I think all the clubs are sort of back training now, or they're off on their pre-season tours. Mm -hmm. And I think you, know, you want to get you want to get players in. Yeah, talking of players, Christian Eriksen, I think, is the second domino to fall after Paul Pogba. You know, he doesn't seem to be happy at Spurs. Is that money related, or what well, do you I think it's a mixture. I mean, I think that uh, certainly uh, we know that he's on a much lower contract than uh, some of his teammates, and compared to. You know the other big names in in clubs. He, he's getting paid a fraction, so I suspect that doesn't help. Plus, I think you know maybe you know he said he wants to challenge, and I think he really does want to go to Spain. But my understanding there is that Real Madrid would love him, but they they'd rather have Paul Pogba than not. They can't afford both, so therefore they may you know Ericsson as this as things stand. My understanding is there haven't been any bids for him, so he's in a bit of limbo now. If we get to the August eighth and no bids come in for him then Tottenham aren't going to want to sell him because in La Liga, they can carry on. Uh, their window doesn't shut till September 2nd. Uh, we've discussed okay. this before. So you've got a situation where, you know, there could still be some big money moves, but would Tottenham sell Ericsson if it's too late for them to bring somebody in? You know, I'd, I'd be surprised if they would. So I think things are going to have to start moving soon. Yeah. You know, because our, our deadline of August 8th is, you know, that window is really shutting much earlier than normal. Yeah, talking of shutting, there's two players that I just can't believe they were paid the vast amount of money they were. Mesut Ozil, what is happening at Arsenal? Every time I read, they're trying to offload him. Can, can you see them doing it? Well, I think they'd like to. I, I read yesterday that uh, Fenerbahce in, uh, in Turkey would, would, would want to try and sign him, but they can't afford him. Yeah. I mean, Ozil, Ozil will have to drop his wages to go uh, outside of you know, the big sort of 
two or three countries, and uh, you know he's on three hundred thousand a week. I, I can't see anybody paying that for him at his age. Um, and you know he might just sit tight. Arsenal seem very keen to want to bring in Wilfred Zaha, yeah. but they just don't have the cash. So they've got to find a way of. of selling one or two players to release some cash so they can afford to buy Zaha. My understanding is yesterday they've offered, they still haven't upped their offer, but they've offered players as well in part to exchange to Crystal Palace yeah. for him. I think Palace are holding out for cash, so I think things will happen there. But again, you know, Ozil is in and out of the team. He hasn't done it for them in big games for, for quite some time. So uh, you know, I think Arsenal would like to offload him if they can, but I don't, can't see them getting a lot of money for him now. Steve, do you think it'll get to the stage where they cap salaries like they do in America, or is that uh, you, can you not do that in Europe? Uh, look, it, you know, all these things can be done, but whether or not all the clubs will agree, uh, you know, obviously there's more. You know, as money keeps coming in, you mm. know, Sky and, and, and everybody they keep pumping more and more money into the game. Then uh, you know, the players and their agents are going to want a, a bigger share of it. You know, it isn't healthy, as we know that, uh, and obviously this whole. Going back to the Alexi Sanchez thing with his rumoured sort of five hundred thousand a week, yeah. it's, it's just they've just made a rod for their own back, and it set the bar far too high so that other players coming through are saying, "Well, if he's on five hundred, I've got to be minimum three hundred or four hundred. Yeah. And you know, where does it end? It's uh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, you know, just saying that the whole Neymar situation. All of a sudden, the strength seems to be with the agents and the players. You know, he was quick well, enough. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and this is another situation. So, you know, Neymar is uh, laid back. Um, they're talking about whether, you know, they're going to find him or not. You think if he's laid back, surely you send a message to your other players in the team that this isn't acceptable and you find him accordingly. Uh, yeah, again, I mean, you know, Neymar wants, you know, he's been at PSG two minutes and it, it didn't work out for him as maybe he'd like. Um, and now he wants to go somewhere else. And they, it's almost like they're just throwing their toys out the pram. And, and it's, trouble is, if you've got players that you've paid a lot of money for and are paying a lot every week and they're just not doing it, then mm. you are better off getting shot and bringing somebody in that does. Yeah, I see Griezmann's also up to his antics at Atletico. Yeah, and again, you know, you, you thought that this was a, a, a done deal, but uh, Atletico are, are not at all happy with the way that, that transfer has has been going through. We know they're very unhappy. They believe that Barcelona made an uh, un un unethical approach uh, earlier. Earlier, so you know, as things stand, you think he's still going there. But if not, you wonder where else because there aren't that many other teams that are going to want to pay that sort of money. Yeah. I think United would possibly, but again, you know, do they want to have? I mean, they've got enough problems with Sanchez, with Pogba. Do they need another player who's him and his agent that start causing tantrums? It's. Uh, I think, you know, some of that, as you say, yeah, player power, power needs to be checked. Yeah, I agree. They're going to have to, I think, pull the reins in, especially United. And we can't carry on overpaying for mediocrity. Last but not least, I see Chelsea played a friendly last night. They played in uh, Ireland in a okay. pre-season tour, and they were held to a 1-1 draw. They conceded in the, in the last minute. So I think, you know, they've obviously only just gone back to training. It's a, a gentle start for them before they go on their sort of world tour okay. and play matches. Um, they're still short of a few players who have international breaks, but, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to sort of give, give a run out to, to some of the players. Yeah, I see uh, Danny Drinkwater was involved. Yeah, I think sort of Frank Lampard's made it clear is that, you know, he's, he, he has no preconceived ideas as to, you know, what his starting eleven is going to be. So he's giving everyone a chance. Someone like Danny Drinkwater, I mean, he really needs to step up now. Yeah. He's done, you know, obviously with all his, his issues in the last year and he was obviously frozen out. You know, it's up to him. that It's in his hands. If he can show that he is the player that he, that he was when he joined Chelsea a couple of years ago, yeah. you, know, you know, maybe he'll be back in favour. But uh, if not... You know, you'd think that he'd want to go. You'd think that he would want to go out on loan because if, if Frank Lampard makes it clear over the next three weeks that he's not going to figure in his plans, you, you know, is, is he going to just sit on the bench and take the money, or, or you just don't know? I think that Frank Lampard will definitely uh, involve a lot of the younger players. So especially if they can't bring anybody in, so I think those players that he had out on loan, like Tammy Abraham and Mason Mount, I think these those those players are definitely going to feature in and around the first team this year. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah, he's got one free free season before he has to. The pressure comes on to him. Steve, last but not least, are you uh, you'll obviously be watching the semi final today. Yeah, no, it's uh, you know I think 
you know, let's just hope. I mean, England are very good at choking in semi-finals, <laughs> so it's been 27 years since we've uh, won a semi-final and got through to the final. And you know, New Zealand lay in wait, and I think that was uh, a real shock. I don't think, uh, yeah. uh, anybody thought that that was going to happen, especially the way that New Zealand have been playing recently and the way that you know that they they were chasing relatively low score India, but. Uh, good luck to them. So you know, let's hope that England can can do the job against Australia. And the finals at uh, Lords on Sunday, is that right? Lords, the finals at Lords on Sunday. Um, I think there'll be. I mean, it sold out a while ago. But again, I was talking to some uh, one of the uh, Indian fans in my office, yeah. and you know, a lot of Indians bought tickets uh, in advance, assuming they were going to get to the finals. So there could be a few uh, up for grabs. All right, are you going? Uh, depending on. Uh, how many noughts on the end of the, uh, of the black? <laughs> but, uh, so if it's two, you'll be going. If it's more than that, you'll be uh, watching on the box. <laughs> and listen, I'd love to, but let's yeah. see. I don't want to, you can't count your chickens because uh, yeah. you know Australia, Australia haven't uh, don't lose to uh, have never lost a semi final in in the cricket. Evidently, they've won they've won all seven or something they've been in. So let you know, it's it's we we'll just hope that the weather holds and it's and it's a good game. All right, Steve. Steve, thanks for joining us as normal. Pleasure. We'll speak to you next okay. week. All the best, Steve. Yeah, cheers, bye, cheers bye, Steve. Gav. Cheers. All right, Gav. A lot of info coming out from Steve. He's on the ball. Yeah, he's, he's on top of his game there back in England. I mean, yeah. I, mean I can't believe the way the, the players are, are kind of like a law unto themselves with their agents. They're just holding clubs to ransom, yeah. wanting the telephone numbers, if you can call it, uh, salaries and then they just don't want to perform i mean it's just yeah. ridiculous i mean there's got to be some type of change and i agree with the capping the salary caps have to be yeah. to put somewhere on hold you, you can't be earning five hundred thousand when the man on the street is is on twenty thousand a year twenty thousand a year yeah. okay, 25 grand. years you've got okay. to work to earn what he earns in a week yeah and he's injured doesn't play better oh, no, you know rain or shine they're there supporting yeah. you know they buy their season tickets and the players just decide they will play this week or they're going to leave. I mean, it's yeah, just ridiculous. Doesn't make sense. Just to recap on the AFCON last night, obviously, Bafana got beat 2 1. Senegal 1, Benin 0. Terrible game. Gab, we've got the, the, the bracket up as we discussed last week, and we'll go through it. You know, Senegal, Benin, Senegal have gone through. Madagascar, Tunisia tonight. What a great story. Yeah, Madagascar. Jeez, these guys have really surprised everybody. And I think that's the secret with them. Yeah. 11 players have taken the field and they've had a full go. Um, surprised everybody. They're big, strong boys. They, they've taken their chances. Yeah. Where you've got a Tunisia side that seems to play on the back foot a little bit and try and keep possession. Um, and I think I've drawn most of their games throughout think, the tournament yeah. and got through a penalty a shootout. Yeah. Haven't won a game. And it could be quite an interesting game the way it sets up tonight. Um, again, I think we should support the underdog here. I think Madagascar, yeah. the team that's wanting to have a go, yeah. um, give them the benefit. Well, as you know, I've been on Senegal, so I do hope it's Madagascar, but I'm not impressed with Tunisia either. It could, wouldn't surprise me. I just think organisation wise, Tunisia should sneak through, but it wouldn't surprise me, Madagascar. Now, the other game I think will be a humdinger Ivory Coast against a team that's really impressed me, Algeria. Algeria for me, what do you think? Yes, do you I, I like Algeria, like we said two weeks ago and, and again last week. The team yeah. that's really on the front foot, they started the tournament in a positive frame of mind. They've yeah. gone forward with purpose. Um, they, they're good players have stepped up to the plate. And they've all come forward, come forward and played really good games. Yeah. So they look like the team that the team actually to beat in the tournament. Um, so I'm leaning towards uh, Algeria to get a positive result tonight. Yeah, and uh, if it goes according to you as we see it, well, as I said, I think Senegal, Tunisia, and the semis on the weekend. Senegal get to the final? Yeah, I think, I think Senegal will be too good for Tunisia. Okay, now the other side of it, Nigeria will play the winners of Ivory Coast, Algeria. Now, if it's, if it's uh, Nigeria, Ivory Coast? Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards Algeria to get through to the final. Okay. I think that, like you said earlier, they battle past a, a somewhat in and out South African team. Mm. Um, and I would think Algeria are a lot better than, than um, most of the teams in the group, and, and it shows where they are in the tournament. With Nigeria, they're a little bit disorganised. They're just not putting the full 90-minute game together, yeah. but they have good, good players that can hurt you, and they do have the opportunities. Yeah. So I'm leaning towards Algeria because they're one of the positive teams in the tournament who have done really well. So you've got a Senegal-Algeria final? 100%. Are yes. you following suit, Gab? I agree with that. Just to recap on the, the last 16, really disappointed in Morocco. Missed the penalties, IH. Yeah, we spoke about Morocco as being the team to beat on my side of the draw, and I yeah. thought that they would go deep. But uh, obviously on your side, I mean, you took my boys, uh, Morocco, to go out on penalties, yeah. and it arrived like that. 
But again, they should have won their game comfortably. They left it too late in the game to try and push forward to yeah. get the winner. They dominated the game in all facets. So at the end of the day, when you don't take your chances, you get beat. And that's what happened to them. Yeah, Ghana, Cameroon, we predicted it. Yeah, Cameroon and Ghana, we both said that they wouldn't get past the quarters. They looked like an aging team with some problems. Um, they started off well, but they just fizzled out as the, as the tournament went further. Um, I think they've got some work to do in the future to get yeah. back up there again. Yeah, so well, they just seem to lack quality players. And Egypt, two of the favourites, and obviously the hosts, really disappointing way to go out. Yeah, and you've got everything in your favour, like we said before. I mean, they had a big crowd, the, the home crowd, everything, everything went in their favour. You yeah. know, they couldn't have got a better draw that you pick one of the teams based in South Africa. Yeah. They would have said, yes, we've got this game under control. But again, the pressure got to them, I think, and then they just started to doubt themselves where the goal was going to come from. Yeah. And South Africa, I think, had one shot in the game and scored it. And that's all it takes in a football match, yeah. one shot. Yeah, you see, I was surprised. It looked like they'd swapped jerseys. South Africa had been poor up to the stage. Deserved to win easily. Yeah. yeah. You know, and Egypt, who had been playing great. And really, when I looked at that team, it was only Trezor Go who plays in Turkey and Mo Salah that they really had of any substance. The rest were all players playing in Egypt. Yeah, I think some, some of the players started to think, well, Salah and... Uh, they just they would They would give them the ball and they would do the, the magic for them. And uh, South Africa, credit to them, they came out, it looked like there was a fear factor on that day, and yeah. they, they played and they, they hung in there. And when the chance arrived, they took it. Yeah, I think that's a disappointment for me after having outplayed Egypt and won convincingly. To play like we did last night with a break on leaves a bit of a sour taste, but... Got to the quarterfinals, I think that was better than most of us expected. No, 100%. I think that uh, the guys did, did really well um, to get past Egypt and falls flat. So it's just one of those things in football. If you don't yeah. step up every week, yeah. you're going to have the disappointments. But I mean, it, to beat Egypt, I mean, it's a good, great result. Great yeah. result. I agree. On to the MLS, where I'll run through it quickly. And we kick off, it's a, a Friday night our game, early Saturday morning game. Now, Wayne Rooney was sent off last weekend. His team got beat. Fortunately for him, they rescinded the, they rescinded the red card, so he's allowed to play. DC United at home, they're unbeaten in six. But I think 27 to 10, the draw looks a good thing here because New England are unbeaten under their new manager in seven games. So if I was having a bet in that game, 27 to 10 would be my play. Houston versus Los Angeles. Los Angeles are the favorites to win the competition, but they were surprisingly beaten this morning by Portland at home in the quarterfinal of the US Open Cup. Facing a Houston team who have won seven and drawn three of their last 10 home games, don't be surprised if the home team upsets them again. LA Galaxy, which is Saturday morning, five o'clock our time, have Zlatan Ibrahimovic in great form. He scored a couple on the week, the last weekend. They've won four of the last six at home. And I think they'll be too good for a San Jose team who have lost nine of the last 13 away league games. Montreal, Toronto. Toronto, two years ago, were the champions. They've got several players returning from their Copa America and America in the Gold Cup competitions. Montreal, Toronto, which is obviously a Canadian derby. Expect plenty of goals for me. Montreal let me down last week with a beating at home. So draw a big player. Orlando City at home against Columbus Crew. Columbus have lost their last seven away from home and lost 12 of the last 14. Orlando should be good things at 9 to 10, but bear in mind, they, they played a, a cup game that went to extra time and penalties this morning, but 9 to 10 Orlando City should be the play in that particular game. Chicago should be too good for a Cincinnati team who have lost their last eight away from home. One to three isn't the greatest price, but nine to ten to win by more than one goals looks like the right way to go in that particular fixture. Minnesota won 6-1 last night and are going great at home. They've won five of the last seven home league games and should be too good for a Dallas team who have lost four of their last five away from home. Real Salt Lake, Philadelphia. Philadelphia are top of the Eastern Conference. And their last seven away league games have only seen them lose once. Real Salt Lake are in good form and won their last four home games. Five to two, the draw would be my prediction in that particular game. On to our last slide, Vancouver sporting Kansas City. Vancouver, going well at home, only lost one of the last seven against a sporting Kansas City team that have won one of their last five, even though they've only lost two of the five. 24 to 10, the draw looks a game against two, between two low scoring teams. So I wouldn't be going for any of them, but the draw would be my play in that particular match. 
Portland, after beating Los Angeles 1-0 away last night, should be aimers against a Colorado team. But you never know. The, the midweek cup games can take it out for you. I wouldn't be taking 4-10 to 10 Portland, but they do look good things. Seattle versus Atlanta. Atlanta, the current champions, but their form away from home has been terrible. They've lost their last four, and I'm siding with Seattle. They've won seven and drawn two at their home stadium, and I think they'll roll Atlanta on Sunday night. The final game is the, the Bronx derby between the New York Red Bulls against New York City. I fancy the, the Red Bulls to roll them easily. They've won their last two head-to-head -head games at home, and New York City got beat have playing, having played their best team last night in the Cup. 11-10 is my idea of a winner there. On to our exotics for the weekend. We kick off for the, on Saturday, and I'm taking three bankers in three fields. I'm bankering Rosenberg to beat Viking Stavanger. I'm going for ARK Stockholm to beat Ulsborg. I'm going the field in the Falkenberg IFK Gothenburg match. AFC Eskils Tuna Kalmar clash. I'm bankering Bodo Glynn to beat Ranham in the Norwegian Elite Syrian. And I'm going the field looking for the upset. Portland, Colorado Rapids, 162. Our second soccer six is our American one. I'm going the field in the in the Canadian derby between Montreal and Toronto. I'm bankering Orlando City to beat the Columbus Crew. Chicago Fire to beat Cincinnati. I'm going the field in the Minnesota Dallas clash. I'm going Real Salt Lake, win and draw at home against Philadelphia Union. And I'm signing with the away team of Sporting Kansas City to get at least a draw at Vancouver Whitecaps, 216 rand. On to our soccer 10. It's a bit of a mix and match one. I'm banking Gremio. From the, from the Brazilian Serie A to beat Vasco da Gama. I'm siding with Santos, win and draw at Bahia. I'm going Palmeiras, who are unbeaten in their last 28 league matches to get a, at least a win or a draw against local derby Sao Paulo. I'm going Montreal Impact, win and draw at home against Toronto. I'm bankering Orlando City to beat the Columbus Crew. Our second page sees us bankering Chicago Fire against Cincinnati. I'm siding with the Loons of Minnesota not to get beat at home against Dallas. I'm going with Real Salt Lake against Philadelphia Union. I'm going Sporting Kansas City, win and draw at the Vancouver Whitecaps. And I'm going win and draw, Portland Timbers against the Colorado Rapids, 258 rand. On to our Swedish Soccer 13, I'm bankering ARK Stockholm to beat Ellsborg. I'm going IFK Gothenburg, win and draw at Falkenbergs. I'm going with Kalmar to get a good result at AFC Eskils Tuna. On to the Swedish Super Etten. I'm going with Mjalbi, win and draw at RK Frej. I'm bankering Orgrad to beat Osters. RK Brage to beat the biggest club in the world, Bromma Pochkana. I'm going with Bodo Glimt to beat Ranham at home. A second page, I'm going Sligo Rovers to win and draw at home against Waterford. That's an Irish Premier League clash. And I'm going BK Hacken to beat Orobro. The Sunday games, I'm going Malmo to win and draw at Jur Garden. I'm going with I Norkopping, win and draw at Ostersons. I'm going with Dol Kurt to get a good result at Gaze Gothenburg. And I'm going Norby, win and draw at home against Halmstead, 435 rand. On to our budgies bets for the weekend. I'm going the LA Galaxy to beat San Jose. I'm going Orlando City to beat the Columbus Crew. I'm going Seattle Sanders to beat Atlanta United, and I'm going with the New York Red Bulls to beat New York City, 2,900 to 200. On to our Swedish quartet, I'm going ARK Stockholm to beat Elfsborg. I'm going Helsingborg to beat Sirius, and I'm going over two and a half goals in the Falkenberg IFK Gothenburg and AFC Eskil Tuna Kalmar matches, 3,600 to 200. The Brazilian Serie A returns, so we've got to have a dip at that. I'm going Atletico Paranaense, who have won 15 of the last seven at, 17 at home, to beat Internacional. I'm going with Fortaleza to beat struggling Avai. I'm going with Fluminense to beat Chiara. And I'm going Botafogo to win or draw at Cruzeiro on Sunday, 2,500 to 200. Our both teams to score outfits are BK Hack and Orobro. I'm going Eskils, Tuna, Kalmar, Montreal, Toronto, Portland, Colorado, and Real Salt Lake, Philadelphia, 2,900 to 200. 
a handicap treble. All these teams have to win by more than one goal. I'm going Chicago Fire to beat Cincinnati. I'm going the New York Red Bulls to beat the Bronx Derby against New York City. And I'm going Fluminense to beat Chiara, all by more than one goal, 3,900 to 200. Our Collis King, six on Exa. I'm going for ARK Stockholm to beat Elfsborg. I'm going for Helsingborg to beat Sirius. I'm going for the Chicago Fire to beat Cincinnati. I'm going for New York Red Bulls to beat New York City. I'm going for Corinthians to beat CSA and Fluminense to beat Chiara, 4,600 to 200. Before you, I'll give you my best, best bet and best value bet, Gav. You love Bunch, a I think we should uh, just give a quick mention to the U.S. soccer team, women's soccer team that played so well and, and yeah. retained the, the World Cup. I think the women's soccer has come a long way. Nice big crowds, good to see. Um, so yeah, go shout out to the, the U.S. Yeah. women's team, played really well. Yeah, they had their parade yesterday in New York. They're looking for equal pay. They may get it with the men's, with the U.S. Yeah. men's team, which I think they deserve. But uh, I think they must just remember that it's the, they, got, they piggyback off. They have, it was a standalone league. I think they'd be in trouble. Yeah, but good luck they, to them. The, they the equal pay, I think, is still some way off um, to get that. I think but they'll yeah. get it from the Americans because the American team <clears throat> is poor. They don't win anything. So yeah. they deserve as much as the men's. I can definitely agree with that. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Gap, your pick yeah. for the day. My pick for the day is going to be Algeria to get through to the final okay. and win the final. So I'm going against you. Okay. Uh, I think really Algeria, the team that uh, has really stepped up and shown that they've they come with good intention to win this tournament this year, and I think Algeria could do it. Yeah, I think they were 12 to 10, I uh, saw yesterday, to, to beat Ivory Coast tonight, and just parole the money. I agree, I think they're the team to beat, but it won't be easy for them. My best bit of the day. Fortunately, last week, my best bit and best value bit arrived, so hopefully our good form continues. I'm going with Henrik Larsson's Helsingborg. Monday night, playing in the Swedish Alsvenskan. He's only been there two games, both have been away. They've been the better team in both of them. They won the first game against a highly a decent team in the Swedish league. And they were unlucky last Monday where they drew 1-1 to a team that was unbeaten in their last seven home games. So they're my team to beat. And my value bet, I looked hard and wide. I'm going to go in the Brazilian league. Santos are at Bahia. Bahia played last night in the Brazilian Cup. They played away from home, so the travel effect will obviously be an advantage to Santos, who was second place. They've won the last three matches, and they've also got all their internationals back. So 16, 18 to 10 Santos I saw this morning. That's my play for the weekend. To all your viewers, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Thank you.